In southern New Jersey, a monster is born. The thirteenth child to an overburdened mother, unwanted and cursed by those who should protect it. A misshapen creature, the Devil of Leeds has an abnormally long neck with the face of a goat. Its glowing red eyes and sharp canine teeth make for a terrifying visage. Indeed, damnation is apparent in its every aspect. Consumed by an insatiable hunger, the devil hunts various domesticated animals, swooping down on leathern wings in order to ambush its prey. All too often have farmers and good townsfolk come across this beast in the midst of its savagery, only for the monster to take flight and flee before proper arms might be brought to bear. Its cloven hooves often leave strange bipedal prints in the snow and mud of the surroundings of New Jersey, with many people waking up to the trip-trapping of this creature as it stalks across their rooftops, leaving only those unnatural hoof prints as any sign of its passing. Its scream curdles the blood of any and all who hear it, and is often emitted as the beast attacks or flees. This is perhaps the most startling part of its nature, as its voice can only be described as unholy. With a witch for a mother, and sired by the devil himself, it is hard to see how this creature may be anything other than some damnable beast born from the loins of Satan himself. Its forked tongue and pointed tail bear testament to this cursed lineage. Though the devil poses a threat to wandering children, murdering them as they play, very few have mustered the courage to fight back against something so utterly terrifying. Even so, there are some poor souls who mistakenly believe that they might be able to trap this foul beast and put it on display as though it were some simple curiosity from the heart of the jungle. However, they are all soon proven very wrong. None seem to be able to harm the creature in any meaningful way, and that it has been prowling the lands of New Jersey for nigh on two centuries means that we may never truly be free of this misbegotten beast and the terror that stalks along with it. Ultimately, we may find this devil of New Jersey may be haunting our modern world for a very, very long time. The Jersey Devil has a unique position in popular culture regarding its creation and propagation. Due to the fact that it is a relatively new myth when compared to most others, we have a very clear origin and collection of related stories which we may examine without the veil of time obscuring details, as it so often does with most mythical creatures. We turn back the clock to the late 17th and early 18th centuries. The United States is yet to be founded, however the area has been colonized mostly by British settlers. Political tensions across the nation are high, and indeed, in less than 100 years, America will gain its independence. It is under this backdrop that we find the Leeds family. Daniel Leeds was a part of the Quaker community that had settled in sections of the New Jersey area. Our story is one of the social and political issues that would lead to this man's family giving birth to a monster. For their part, the Quakers, most notable in modern times for their oaths, are a sect of Protestantism, and they believe that the light of God can be found and expressed in every individual. Some within the religion even go so far as to declare that all people have the status of priests as a result of this divine spark. Needless to say, this religious environment will come into play later in the story. Daniel Leeds was an almanac publisher in competition with Benjamin Franklin. In order to set himself apart from other such publishers, Daniel would publish images and texts related to astrology and cosmology. Indeed, these topics were not only unique to his publications, they also held for Daniel a deep interest, which would also extend to demonology and natural magic. Needless to say, the Quaker community did not take kindly to this kind of publication, and although he was a Quaker himself, Daniel grew quite resentful of the pressure the community had placed upon him. He converted to Anglicanism in hopes of pursuing his interests without interruption from the people living around him. But tensions grew, and people began to refer to Daniel and his family in hushed tones. Not in a fearful manner, but rather in a judgmental way. How could someone syndicate such blasphemous content? Was his conversion no more than further proof as to the extent of his unholy intentions? At the same time, Daniel was a supporter of monarchical rule in the American states, 
an opinion not shared by the Quakers who specifically came to the Americas in order to be free of such influence. Naturally, his political opinions earned him little favor, and it was with great ease that his neighbors successfully dirtied his name. What's more is that his rival, Ben Franklin, would occasionally publish snippy comments about Daniel. These comments would tease the man in all manner of ways, calling him a devil and later even going so far as to predict the death of his son, claiming that later writings by his son were done by a ghost. It certainly didn't help that Daniel was rather blessed with children, having twelve children, nine of which came from a single woman who was his third wife. This kind of luck in a time where having children was rather difficult certainly didn't remove from the suspicion cast over his family. And so the resentment against Daniel grew. People began to refer to Daniel and his family at large as the Leeds Devil, as a result of the social and political stigma that had collected around him. This was not done in an effort to claim that he was a monster, but rather as a more general insult meant to describe him as indecent, dishonest, and immoral. Needless to say, through constant usage of this insult, as well as other rumors spreading about the family, the suggestion that a monster stalking the property of the family leads, as well as the Pine Barrens at large, was not very far off. Nearly a hundred years after the socio-political rivalry, with people hearing about stories but being far removed from the culture that produced them, we would see individuals suddenly claim to have encountered the Jersey Devil. Notably, the elder brother of Napoleon Bonaparte, Joseph Bonaparte, in 1830 claimed to have seen some kind of creature that he called the Jersey Devil. And ten years later, in 1840, we see the devil blamed for the killing of livestock in the area. However, it isn't until the 1900s that reports and hoaxes suddenly increase, notably during the week of January 16th to January 23rd in the year of 1909. Hundreds of sightings and encounters with the Jersey Devil were reported, and some people claimed to have been attacked or fought with the creature. The sudden hysteria must have seemed terrifying to people living in the area at the time. The Philadelphia Zoo went so far as to offer a $10,000 reward for the capture of the devil. To put this into perspective, this would be approximately $254,000 in modern currency. The Jersey Devil has been mentioned in all sorts of media as well from episodes of the X-Files to video games such as the Wolf Among Us, and even as part of toy lines. This relatively young creature has successfully integrated into the myth and lore of our modern world. Even today, there are still those who hunt for the creature, although reports of it have decreased over the years. And with the introduction of ubiquitous cell phone cameras, the devil has shown itself to be suspiciously absent from the internet. Ultimately, this is a tragic story. Through nothing but political intrigue and rumor-mongering, the Leeds family has become forever associated with this monster. Indeed, it's hard to imagine a worse fate than the insults of your enemies gaining legendary status and becoming known all over the world. It's difficult to ascertain as to whether Daniel Leeds was deserving of this fate. But it does bring into question as to how many more of our myths and legends are nothing more than misremembered insults and taunting. We can never truly know. Following the legend of the Jersey Devil gives us a strong background to work with in order to flesh out this creature. Initially we look to the creation of the Devil, in which it is born to a rather fecund mother, as the Devil is meant to be her thirteenth child. At this point, an important aspect to note is that the Jersey Devil is essentially human, rather than some extravagant fantastical beast. Therefore, the human body is another limiting factor to consider. We must try to figure out what might cause an otherwise ordinary human to spawn such a strange creature. To this end, we look to various birth defects that might affect the pregnancy in such a way as to give rise to someone with this most disturbing visage. Indeed, birth defects are very well recorded phenomena, with some defects vaguely resembling the myths and legends that are popular in our culture. One such defect is Saranomelia, or Mermaid Syndrome. As the name suggests, the child is born with their feet underdeveloped and fused in a manner resembling a mermaid's tail. While other defects, such as atavism, sees the expression of physical traits that we have lost through our evolution. This can result in children being born with tails, excessive body hair, or even additional nipples. 
There is no consistent cause for these defects, however. Everything from genetic disorders, developmental abnormalities, or exposure to teratogenic substances can lead to these issues. Although often we are not at all sure as to what causes such defects to manifest, as is the case with mermaid syndrome. However, factors related to conception, birth, and fetal development certainly do affect the chances of defects arising in children. Most notably, as is the case of the Jersey Devil, Mother Leeds in the legend supposedly has 12 other children prior to the Devil. Although volume of children does not appear to increase the likelihood of instances of birth defects with each successive child, the age of the mother certainly does. With 12 other children behind her, we can easily induce that Mother Leeds is rather advanced in age. Thus, we can perhaps chalk this up as a factor contributing to the birth of the devil. Although this is unlikely, as the effect of the mother's age is usually limited to genetic defects such as Down syndrome. This is decidedly unlike what we see with the Jersey Devil. Furthermore, besides this single factor, there is very little else upon which we can reliably draw in order to infer how such an odd array of birth defects might occur. New Jersey has no history of anomalous birth defects, even during the time the Jersey Devil was supposedly born. This brings us to perhaps the most difficult factor to consider in all of this. The specific form of the Jersey Devil, one of a winged goat beast, is so utterly unlike anything we might expect from a human form, that it is impossible to feasibly justify how it might come about. At a stretch, we may consider the effects of the aforementioned teratogenic substances in conjunction with some pre-existing defect present in the child. As the name suggests, a teratogen is a substance that makes monsters. Rather fitting considering the topic. Common teratogens include alcohol, nicotine and radiation, while others can be found in drugs such as casoprin or accutane. In most of these cases, these substances are safe for adult consumption but their effects on fetuses is dramatic. These substances act on the fetus by inhibiting the development of enzymes, proteins and other structures, as well as damaging DNA during fetal development. Naturally, this leads to the unfortunate results we see in cases where such substances have taken their toll on a child. One might think that the fact that the devil is the 13th child might contribute to Mother Leeds' exposure to these substances. However, there is no data on matters such as changes in alcohol consumption across multiple births, or any other common teratogen. According to the Medical Journal of Australia, it appears that, as women age, they are in fact less likely to consume teratogens during pregnancy. However, teratogens have historically been used by accident to treat people during pregnancy. Famously, thalidomide was used during the 1950s to treat morning sickness. At the time, it was unknown that thalidomide exposure caused severe birth defects in the form of extremely underdeveloped limbs. Considering that the time in which the devil is said to have been born, there may be a chance that Mother Leeds was exposed to some unknown teratogen, but data from the 1700s and 1800s regarding this is obviously lacking. Although, in modern New Jersey, 1 in 25 births have some kind of serious birth defect according to the Center for Disease Control and Prevention, but this mostly consists of things such as cleft palates and the like. Ultimately, we find that what we are discussing is statistical odds. While it is perhaps reasonable to imagine that some combination of these birth defects such as an artivistic tail and hair, in addition to various bone deformities that we might see from thalidomide exposure or fetal alcohol syndrome, acting in conjunction with some kind of skin ailment that might resemble wings, the chances of all this occurring simultaneously are vanishingly small. All of this information leads us to conclude that someone being born who even remotely resembles the Jersey Devil is extremely unlikely. Indeed, the English language is perhaps ill-equipped to accurately express how unlikely this is. It would simply suffice to say that it is impossible. Even so, there is a kernel of truth to every legend. Who knows what strange and unlikely set of circumstances might have led to the creation of something resembling this creature. It could even be born today, 